Welcome. On this video, we will take a look into the idea of corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So let's consider the following situation. So let's say that we have two congruent triangles, ABC and DEF, which you can see them here below. What are some congruent statements that we can make knowing that I have two congruent triangles? We can start. By looking at the order that we are stating that congruency statement, by the way that we have stating this congruency statement, we're saying that the segment AB is congruent to DE. So where's that at? Um, AB is congruent to DE. And also, we're saying that BC is congruent to EF. So BC is congruent to EF. And lastly, CA is congruent to FD. So CA is congruent to FD. So don't forget, the way that we state our congruency statement matters. The order matters. By the way that we're stating that congruency, we can see that we have certain congruent sides. So perhaps these are some statements that we can say about congruent sides. So when it comes to sides, notice that we have said that AB is congruent to DE. We have also stated that BC is congruent to EF. And we have also stated that AC is congruent to df but is that all that we can say about this congruent triangles well if those triangles are congruent therefore those angles opposite of congruent sides should also be congruent therefore angle c should be congruent to angle f and also angle a should be congruent to angle d and in addition, angle B should be congruent to angle E. So those angles opposite of congruent sides are also congruence, congruent. So perhaps that's another thing that we can say in terms of congruent statements. We can also say that in terms of angles, we have that angle C is congruent to angle F. And then what else? Angle A is congruent to angle D. And finally, angle B are congruent to angle E. And let's pause here for a second. Notice what we have said here. If we take a look at the order that we list the sides, AB and DE are corresponding. BC and EF are corresponding. AC and DF are corresponding. Therefore, we are saying that corresponding sides are congruent. And the same statement can be said about in terms of angles. So all of these angles are corresponding. So therefore, we're also stating that corresponding angles are congruent. Oops. So corresponding angles are congruent. We can generalize this statement because regardless if there were sides or if there were angles, they were parts of the triangle. So what we can say now is that corresponding so corresponding parts of congruent of congruent triangles are congruent if you know that you have two congruent triangles then you can assume that all corresponding parts which are sides and angles are also going to be congruent and there's a small acronym that is being used and that is C 
P C T C. So if you see C P C T C, that's just a small acronym for corresponding parts. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But the idea is pretty straightforward. You have two congruent triangles, then all the parts are going to be congruent, aka corresponding parts. And that's the statement. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now let's use this idea. Let's take a look at one example here. So here we have it. Now let's think about what we are being given here. We know that angle P and angle S are congruent to each other. And we also know that O is the midpoint of a line segment called PS. What we want to do is we want to see if we have enough information to conclude that angle R and angle Q are congruent to each other. Let's think about how we're going to do this. Notice that within this problem, there is no word that says proof. So we don't need a truth table. We just need to explain what's going on here. So let's look at the diagram. Let's take it one piece at a time. So let's label our diagram. Angle P is congruent to angle S. So here we have it. Angle P is congruent to angle S. Now, if O is the midpoint of PS, if O is the midpoint of PS, then we know that PS get cut in half. Therefore, PO is congruent to OS. Okay, what else can we gather within this illustration? Well, here we have an intersection. Here we have two vertical angles. Therefore, we can claim that they are congruent to each other. Okay, perfect. Now let's pause here for a second because if we identify this triangle, triangle POQ and triangle S R O notice that those two triangles are congruent. How? Because we can see that they are using angle side angle and the same goes for here. We got angle side angle. So we can conclude that triangle P O Q is congruent to triangle S O R by the angle side angle congruence theorem. But now notice what we have done so far. Now we have a very strong statement. Now we know that these two triangles are congruent. So now we can say that corresponding parts are congruent. Well, where is angle R? Angle R we have it right here. Well, actually, let me let me erase those those letters that we have there, which are a little bit distracting. So angle R and angle Q, where are they in my diagram? Well, R is right here. And Q, it's right here. What about their location? Well, notice that R, it's in front of the ang it's in front of the side, which has a one mark. And notice that Q it's right in front of the side that has one mark. Then we can conclude that angle R and angle Q are corresponding. They are on the same location. They are both in front of two sets of congruent sides. And now if we piece it all together. We know that we have congruent triangles. And we know that R and Q are corresponding. Therefore, we can conclude this statement by saying that angle R is congruent to angle Q because corresponding, corresponding size of congruent triangles are congruent. 
Another way that we could have just stated here is angle R is congruent to angle Q by CPC TC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So notice the strategy that we did here. We acknowledge that there were two triangles and we try to show that those triangles were congruent because once you have that information, then now you can conclude that every single corresponding angle and corresponding side will be congruent. Hello, if you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.